हेलो ऑल वेलकम बैक टू दी वीडियो सीरीज ऑन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स इन जोग्राफी एंड एनवायरमेंट फॉर दी 2020 ट्वेंटी प्रिलिम्स एग्जाम एट दी आउटसेट लेट मी थैंक यू फॉर दी वेरी गुड रिस्पॉन्स यू हैव गिवन फॉर दी एर्लियर ट्यू वीडियोज ऑन दी इंटरनेशनल प्लेस एंड दी नेशनल प्लेस इन न्यूज टूडे आई एल बी इंटरेक्टिंग विद यू ऑन सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू एनवायरमेंट and ecology and biodiversity uh, so be very clear on all the uh, fundamental concepts of uh, ecology like ecotone the pelagic deposits and all those terms which are uh, in the first few chapters um, of the ecology and then be also very clear about all the legislations related to both environment as well as biodiversity all the acts just list out and uh, read the salient features of it and read it very thoroughly similarly all the uh, rules related to uh, all some of this uh, topics like uh, mm, Um, biochemical waste or pollution, pollution related, and all those rules also be very very clear. <clears throat> Lot of students have uh, have one common uh, question uh, whether to read those five uh, hundred uh, wildlife sanctuaries, hundred national parks, and thirty uh, seven uh, wetlands, and so many mangroves, and so many more than hundred uh, species which are critically endangered, and all that. so they keep asking whether it's uh, really required to remember all the names and uh, all the salient features of each of this well uh, i'm not saying uh, it's not required but um, probably a more scientific way of um, looking at it is uh, important uh, so one way of uh, finding out uh, what is important is uh, we'll uh, go back and see what are the type of questions uh, that have come in these uh, topics in the previous years and and why they have come and try to analyze and then work out on how we can focus on uh, more important areas rather than trying to cover up everything which is not actually uh, possible so um, we'll see uh, there was a question on um, kuno palpur uh, in madhya pradesh uh, i'm sure many of us have not heard about it There's so much as we would have heard about the gir forest or the corbet or the um, aravallis or the nilgiris or agast malai and all that but this question had come this question had come because it was in the news for a very long time because uh, the government had taken a decision to move the big cat from gujarat to madhya pradesh the place called is kunopalpur so and there was a lot of protest from the uh, gujarat uh, chief minister as you can see here he says no question of lion transfer to kunopalpur so it was in the news for quite some time and it uh, mm, was uh, important in that sense that uh, during the uh, past so it had this news has come in october 2018 so that is how uh, a question was asked uh, on this uh, kunopalpur and then there was also uh, another uh, <coughs> uh, sanctuary's name uh, phakohi phakohi is a very remote uh, um, uh um, sanctuary in place in arunachal pradesh so normally if you um, look at all the wildlife sanctuaries and see probably you may have not uh, heard about it or uh, may not be so familiar but then it was important in the sense that this was also in the news because it, it had a uh, program to conserve the hornbill which was facing crisis so it won the biodiversity award for conserving the hornbill so that was in the news uh it had come in 2018 uh, june so this was also important so there was a question on this uh similarly uh, there was also another um, uh, question on uh, prosophis juliflora prosophis juliflora is one species probably no one would have heard or um, tried to make a note or uh, remember it but then uh, this was this is an uh, invasive species introduced from the uh, central europe and the asian highlands uh, into india and it was creating uh, a problem to the uh, indian uh, um, terrain uh, so um, so this was also uh, in the news as you can see there was a there's a drive to uproot invasive plant species so this 
species was in the news, it had come in the newspapers. And so that's how a question was asked in this. So this is one way of uh, uh, going about on understanding what is uh, important or what is in focus or what has been in news and trying to um, revise it, make a note of it, uh, deep dive and understand a little background about that and all that. So that is one way of uh, understanding. So uh, this is how uh, I'll analyze. There is also another way of uh, looking at it that what could be important based on the type of organizations uh, which have been set up at the international level and at the national level and what they do annually. So we will we can shortlist some of these species there. So one of that uh, kind of an organization or a convention is the uh, sites. You all know the sites. Uh, it's basically a convention on uh, international trade uh, on endangered species of uh, wild fauna and flora. So this uh, convention on an annual basis uh, keeps these uh, species of various countries in three appendices. There are there's an appendix one, appendix two and appendix three. In appendix two, the absolutely trade of uh, any of the species is totally banned. In uh, appendix two, commercial trade is allowed to an extent after following a uh, specified uh, procedure. And in uh, appendix third, it's uh, basically uh, for giving a legal origin and it includes species protected by any one particular country or uh, entity which uh, then can approach uh, uh, for assistance to uh, sites. So these three based on these three um, appendices we can understand what are the animals and every country on an annual basis gives a proposal to uh, the sites to list their uh, species, plant, animal and uh, other species. So well, let's see uh, uh, during the last one year what proposals from India have gone and then try to remember uh, about them. So the India's proposals to size one is the star tortoise, the other is the wedge fish and then the smooth coated otter, rosewood and this uh, tokai gecko which is supposed to be uh, for a lot of importance as far as the uh, its medicinal value is concerned. It can supposed to cure AIDS, diabetes including even cancer. So these are the five proposals which we have sent to sites. So these five uh, become very important. So try to go through this uh, little bit of a background on that, why they have be up with India, send proposals to them. So you can uh, shortlist these five and study in depth about this. Similarly, uh, we have this uh, endangered animal uh, species. So a third uh, week of uh, May of every year, uh, there is some an annual um, kind of a meeting and a gathering of all the uh, experts wherein they decide uh, what are the endangered uh, animals and uh, other species for that one year. So last year, uh, they were um, shortlisted seven uh, animals which are uh, critically endangered in India. You all know about this, this is the Asiatic lion, this is the Bengal tiger, the snow leopard, the Nilgiri tahar, Kashmiri red tag, the black bug and one high one horned rhino. So all these seven are very important and they have all always been in the news for a variety of reasons. So for one reason or the other, uh, a question can um, be picked up by the UPSC on any of these uh, endangered animals. And then similarly, like how uh, there are endangered animals, there are also threatened uh, plants and plant species um, uh, which are um, shortlisted. So these are also equally important. So one of them is uh, Medistica swams, the other is cycads. The citrus, there's a lot of uh, talk and uh, a lot of articles uh, that have come up in both Hindu and Indian Express about the citrus fruits and then the pitcher plant as well and on the rhododendron. And then uh, the scenarius vulture. Uh, the scenarius uh, vulture is basically uh, is to be only seen in the northern plains, particularly in uh, Rajasthan. It, it comes uh, all the way from Europe and Asia. And but the scientists were baffled that for the first time they could identify uh, this year uh, these species in Jharkhand. 
So this can uh, catch uh, the eye of the UPSC and uh, there may be a question related to this uh, scenarios vulture um, in which all places uh, it is seen or sighted and all that. So you should remember that it has been seen in Jharkhand as well. And then uh, like how uh, uh, the uh, earlier um, one species was asked, uh, there could be a question on uh, Aspera uh, also because this species is another very important species because uh, it can reduce the potential of uh, methane emission uh, from the cattle. This is the species which has also been in the news in the environment section of uh, Hindu and the other newspapers. And then this green labor. Green labor has also been seen as a very important uh, seaweed. Uh, it was identified um, in the Diamond Harbor near the uh, banks of Hooghly and also in the Pulikat um, Lake in the Andhra Pradesh. This, it's, this also has uh, a very important medicinal plants. It's supposed to be a very good treatment for cancer. So this is another uh, important weed that has been in the news and could be there could be a question is kindly remember it is called green lever and then uh, what is uh, this term also has been in the news uh, photochemical uh, smog uh, basically the uh, volatile uh, um, uh, co compounds and the various uh, other mixtures uh, particularly the nitrous oxide they um, interact with the uh, sunlight and the kind of a brown smog is created all over uh, particularly found during summer this has been very frequently noticed during the last one year and has been in the news because this can uh, uh, reduce the function um, of your breathing it can create uh, also a little bit of irritation so this has been in the news this photochemical uh, smog particularly during the summers because there is a lot of sunlight and these uh, nitrous oxides and uh, freely moving uh, volatile organic compounds they interact and uh, they form this uh, smog on the the lower uh, part of the atmosphere and they can create a lot of irritation and breathing problems. So this has been in the news. They can just ask how the photochemical smog is formed. Like this, we will uh, try to pick up a few terms which have been in the news and try to understand what they are. Then the ozone hole, uh, you all know that the ozone hole uh, was found uh, in the Antarctica. It's not actually a hole that it's not that there is no ozone there at all, right? but a very reduced amount of ozone. We all know the ozone occurs in the stratosphere and prevents the harmful uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation from reaching us. Otherwise, we would all have had uh, issues uh, like cancer and all that. So ozone, hole, ozone is very important. So while uh, the ozone has been found to be common in Antarctica, they have now recently during the last one year also found ozone hole in Arctic region as well. So that is how uh, the ozone hole um, uh, became again important. And then the acid rain now, uh, the precipitation which uh, carries uh, the, the hydro uh, Mm, hydrosulfuric acid as well as the nitric acid is commonly called the acid rain. Uh, now the uh, acid rain has become much more common though for a few years back it was not that common it was under control but again now during the last one year it has picked up and it has been in the news. So something related to acid rain and uh, what uh, attempts or what initiatives have been taken to reduce it can be an important one. And then the algal bloom, it is just not the algal bloom. There was a lot of uh, news about this uh, algal bloom killing the fish of the uh, Pambam coast near uh, Rameshwaram. Uh, you can see here how the entire thing got totally discolored and because and it was also releasing uh, various toxins. So this is very harmful. This is harmful algal bloom. And then bio uh, mass gasification is another very important concept which has recently been picked up and the scientists are working on it. It is basically converting uh, the uh, biofuel solid mass into gas. So what they do is this biofuel mass, they put it up here after undergoing pyrolysis and combustion and reduction, uh, the gas is uh, released. This gas is um, important because uh, it is uh, it's very clear and clean and 
it can be used for combustion of furnaces or um, uh, running in the turbines etc so this process of so biomass gasification is another important term then eco sensitive zones you all know that uh, there has been a lot of um, studies and scientific work that has been done on the two very important eco sensitive zones that is the himalayan region and then the western ghats so also be clear of what are the recommendations of the kasturi rangan uh, report on the western ghats there will likely to be a question related to that because the recently ngt has uh, ordered that uh, uh, this declaration uh, should be done uh, Uh, immediately and then ministry of environment and forest is trying to work on it and probably there can be uh, a, some kind of an initiative to declare uh, the western ghats region if not the himalayan region as an eco sensitive zone so this area is very important not only for the prelims point of view but also for the mains and then the eco network is basically cross and uh, multidisciplinary uh, experts joining and uh, forming a network and trying to identify the gray areas or the gaps in knowledge about uh, the uh, ecosystems and those subjects uh, can be uh, taken up for students doing post doctoral so this is in a kind of a uh, network which encourages gap finding on the environmental related issues and trying to work and as uh, research topics on this then biopiracy and uh, bioprospecting biopiracy is nothing but a lot of indigenous uh, knowledge uh, related to the biodiversity including the biodiversity hotspots and all that so just to protect uh, these indigenous knowledge uh, of particularly the tribal people and the um, village people so this uh, biopiracy has been uh, 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 taken up and then uh, we also have bioprospecting bio prospecting is like uh, the mineral prospecting how we try to Uh, prospect the minerals here the bio prospecting is for those uh, unique um, genetically um, significant uh, biomarkers or uh, biological resources which need to be a uh, prospect so that's an very important area which is coming up and a lot of research is also happening to know down what the biochemical properties of each of these unique uh, uh, biochemical systems and then microplastics there have been questions in microplastics on uh, in the past um if the length of the uh, plastic is uh, less than 5 mm is generally classified as uh, microplastics but now the recent studies uh, have shown that uh, these uh, microplastics can actually get into the food chain and can uh, cause a lot of uh, toxic effects in this so it's very important to understand what these bioplastics are not only just the microplastics but there are also other varieties of plastics and how they um, have adverse effect on each of the ecosystem i try to um, put it up in a diagrammatic um, way so that you can just follow it up and see so there can be a question related to the uh, sizes of uh, uh, plastic and how they adversely impact uh, the uh, human and the ecological system so this is how the plastic types and uh, how the effect on uh, each of them have on the marine biota so you just try to uh, remember this and then this um, biometra it's uh, for the um, gaganyaan uh, mission all the environmental related things so uh, this particular uh, biometra will try to help them analyze what are the issues related to environment in this particular mission and then uh, blue holes uh, blue holes are uh, nothing but uh, um, cavern uh, kind of structures formed uh, in uh, marine areas uh, filled with uh, water this happens because of the dissolution of uh, uh, carbonate uh, solutions so in several places uh, these blue holes have been noted the most famous one uh, of course is the uh, dragon hole in uh, south china sea but also remember the great blue hole in belize and the dean's blue hole in uh, bahamas this has been in uh, news also so this is another important topic uh, the blue holes
and the, the uh, marine uh, heat waves and marine heat waves not the heat waves not only occur uh, on the land but they can also occur uh, within the oceans in the sea due to the interaction of this uh, ocean currents and what is uh, important here is this marine heat is uh, threatening uh, a brown wheat called uh, kelp this kelp is another important term uh, that can catch the eye of you Christians of what is kelp kelp is nothing but a, a brown uh, weed formed in uh, very highly nutritious saline waters generally occurring along the coast so this kelp is important so but uh, this uh, mm, marine heat wave is uh, threatening uh, the mm, conservation of uh, this kelp forest and this has uh, come up in the news um, in india and uh, in other places as well then the geothermal energy geothermal energy is now uh, the uh, buzzword as far as the energy uh, policy is concerned you should understand that there is a tremendous potential uh, particularly for a country like uh, india where um, deep inside the earth you find uh, magma and then where the magma is generated you find a lot of radioactivity happening which generates heat and this heat that is being generated by the radioactivity due to uranium or thorium can actually be captured uh, as energy and can be uh, converted to in in forms of a uh, uh, running um, uh, sort of hydroelectricity or whatever so there have been some places where india is already doing trying to capture this geothermal energy geothermal energy can be captured in both uh, orogenic regions orogenic is like mountainous regions and also non orogenic regions i have listed down on uh, some important orogenic and non orogenic regions where this geothermal energy can be tapped so this is that uh, you can see the non orogenic uh, regions are the khembe graben uh, sona narmada tapi graben and then you have damodar valley you have mahanadi valley and you have godavar valley etc etc so you can see this is the map which shows uh, both the um, non orogenic and the uh, orogenic and then uh, the orogenic of course is the himalayan geothermal province and more importantly is the naga lushai geothermal province which shows a tremendous uh, a tremendous potential for the uh, geothermal energy and then of course the andaman and nicobar islands and these are the important potential sites this is tuwa and uh, bakreshwar these are the two important uh, potential sites uh, for uh, the geothermal uh, energy and then uh, what is vertical farming vertical farming is nothing but farming um, uh, done um, without soil without using much of water or without any sunlight you know um, the um, uh, greatest um, quality of tomatoes are grown by the uh, vertical farming and then you also can grow green vegetables like lettuce etc so it doesn't use um, uh, the sunlight or water and then can have terms like uh, soilless methods like hydroponics aquaponics and aeroponics and also this vertical farming has been on the uh, rise and uh, there have been discussions on how to actually upscale it and then the mosaic machine uh, is basically to understand the climate change in the arctic region the arctic circle there is an institute called the alfred wegener's institute which has taken up is one of the biggest machines uh, in, in the world to understand the uh, various aspects of uh, climate change in the arctic circle i hope you all remember about uh, alfred wegener he was the one who propounded the continental drift theory so this is uh, bio rock um, this bio rock technology is nothing but there is a kind of a simulation to um, regrow and rejuvenate the coral reefs in bio rock what happens is a, a kind of a, a chemical uh, reaction uh, is generated wherein the minerals get uh, dissolved and then these uh, carbonates are formed and finally the calcium carbonate is formed um, and the heat uh, and this happens 
ones uh, where they put in the steel rods uh, like how you can see here and then uh, this is heated up the heat comes from uh, the um, upper surface of the water wherein they lay the solar panels so from the solar panels the heat comes up and through this uh, steel pipes uh, it dissolves the um, carbonate uh, uh, minerals from the uh, water and then they get deposited as calcium carbonate which form a kind of a stimulus for the corals to form in addition to their own um, biocarbonate formation. So this uh, bio-rock technology has become very important for India particularly in states like Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat and uh, Maharashtra the tremendous potential for this technology and uh, the coral reefs are uh, getting uh, uh, rejuvenated and and uh, also uh, remade a lot of calcium carbonate uh, falling on this uh, polyps. So the ground level uh, ozone uh, is basically similar to the uh, smog uh, uh, formation which we have seen earlier which forms at the lower levels of the atmosphere. Here uh, the ground level ozone forms at the lower levels of the uh, ground but the same kind of a chemical uh, reactions uh, happen. The nitrous oxides and the volatile organic compounds they interact with the uh, sunlight and uh, they produce this uh, ozone at the ground level. Basically, the two secondary pollutants uh, they combine to form this uh, primary pollutant. The secondary pollutants are the uh, volatile organic compounds and the nitrous oxide. This is the peatland. Uh, peatland is the treasure house for uh, the carbon uh, store uh, and then because of the degradation of these peatlands at various places is increasing the um, uh, gaseous emissions of uh, carbon to ensure that we restore uh, these emissions we need to bring back uh, the peatland to their original form and then uh, work on that so a lot of countries are looking at uh, peatlands and um, trying to restore the degraded uh, peatlands to ensure that the emissions are kept intact the black gold is a very important discovery made by the Indian scientists by using uh, the nanoparticles of uh, gold and uh, developed what uh, substance called as the black gold. It's particularly been uh, very useful for uh, desalinating uh, the waters, the sea waters, particularly in Chennai, where there is a water crisis. This uh, black gold can be used to desalinate the salty water. Then uh, Nigeria has been an important country as far as their exports of uh, the oil and gas is concerned. Uh, more than 85% of their uh, domestic produce is uh, exported. So that way this country is important and has also been in the news. Apart from this, it also is one of the uh, richest uh, biodiversity uh, spot with particularly with the uh, important uh, game uh, reserves such as the Yanka the Yankari and the Kanji Lake um, sanctuaries. Similarly, the heart of uh, Borneo, as uh, you can see, has been in the news. The WWF has taken up uh, a huge project of uh, conserving uh, this entire uh, heart of uh, Borneo and preserving the Asia's uh, largest uh, biosphere park. Then uh, the styrene gas, you all have read the news where uh, the, the Gopalapuram uh, Vizag, uh, there has been an uh, sp uh, oil spill and this uh, gas was uh, released. So there can be something related to this because it's been in the news. Then this anthurium uh, is a very beautiful uh, plant which uh, actually controls the harmful uh, airborne particles and the, also the aerosols and the ammonia uh, in the atmosphere. So this has been uh, listed as uh, an important uh, uh, air purifier uh, plant by the NASA. 
and then the Bay of Bengal Large Marine Ecosystem uh, has been there. It is a huge project with uh, so many countries in, uh, involved in it. Try to remember the names of the countries involved in this. Basically, to this is all meant to preserve this uh, uh, region and the. Uh, uh, also conserve the uh, fisheries uh, in and around this uh, coast. And then the ecological debt uh, is uh, something related to the way uh, the richer and uh, well-to-do countries have exploited the um, poorer countries and their uh, indigenous products, basically trying to restore that uh, back where you can see uh, the world owes uh, the ecological debt to the African continent. So this is a, a move uh, just to restore uh, the indigenous uh, ecological law which has occurred in some of the less developed countries. And then uh, vermicompost is nothing but a process of introducing uh, earthworms uh, in the soil to uh, enrich uh, the uh, soils by uh, improving the aeration, uh, improving the soil nutrients, etc. This technology has now been in the use and that uh, proved to be uh, providing very good results. So this is something also quite important. Then uh, eutrophication has uh, come back to news. Basically, eutrophication uh, is a phenomenon of wherein there is a sudden and an abundant increase of uh, uh, nutrients. Uh, these nutrients probably getting increased because of uh, the agricultural uh, water flowing in, bringing in a lot of phosphates and uh, nitrates, etc. This now with this eutrophication, the, the nature and science general a lot of articles related to the eutrophication uh, phenomena because it is uh, because of this uh, continued increasing uh, methane emissions. Uh, you can see this is the article which has come in the Nature Communications uh, just a few, a few months back in March 2019 and this could catch uh, the eye of the UPSC and can be an important topic. Then plogging, you all know that it is just uh, picking up uh, litter while you are jogging. The Honorable Prime Minister has done this, so this was in the news. And then uh, polar amplification, you all know that uh, if there is a disturbance for the net uh, radiation balance of uh, the incoming um, solar radiation, uh, the temperature changes which it affects uh, are not uniformly uh, distributed, but it is the polar regions which affect get affected much more than the other uh, regions on, on an average put together. So this is what is called as the polar amplification and the polar regions get much more affected due to the disturbance in the net balance uh, due to global warming. Then uh, oil zappers uh, has been uh, in the news again. Uh, it's nothing but uh, just a cocktail or a bouquet of various uh, bacteria which are used um, uh, in the oil spills where or where there, where there is an oil refinery uh, which it releases really what is called a sludge, uh, which is uh, which has adverse effects because it releases uh, harmful gases. So. This uh, oil zappers, um, the um, concussion of various bacteria when they are released into the sledge, they separate and convert uh, this harmful uh, sledge into water and carbon dioxide, uh, making it clean. So this has been in the news as well for a very long time. Then ocean acidification, like how we have seen how the acid rain falls, the similar process occurs in the oceans as well, where the pH level gets uh, lowered due to the um, uh, um, deposition of uh, various acids, uh, the hydrochloric acid and the nitrous acid, etc. And this ocean acidification has been on the increase and has also been in the news. Then the uh, sea sparkle, uh, a particular type of uh, algae called as the uh, noctiluca, it's uh, called as the sea sparkle because uh, it uh, um, emits uh, some kind of a luminance called the bioluminance. Uh, it survives not on sunlight or uh, natural uh, <coughs> 
uh, water or any other nutrient but it actually survives by eating the other organisms and this sea sparkle has been on the rise particularly the Goan coast and the uh, marine coast of uh, Chennai causing a uh, lot of uh, problems to the uh, fishing uh, reserves in and around there and that's how this uh, sea sparkle has been in the news. And then uh, environmental impact assessment 2020 has uh, been quite controversial because uh, a lot of agitations regarding the various provisions related to it. So kindly go through this notification and, and what is the genesis of those kind of uh, proposals which have been uh, put up by the Ministry of Environment and Forest and what are your views particularly this could be more important in, for the general studies means. And then the Forest Rights Act and the uh, India State of Forest Report. I'm sure you already have all prepared very well. Please go through this India Forest Report threadbare. It's going to be a very good report that has come up very authentically. And then go through the what are the changes that have been seen, various terms used in the report. Similarly, uh, in fact, more importantly is uh, the uh, bird report, state of uh, India's birds report is one of its kind report. Nearly 10 organizations have joined hands together and brought in uh, this report uh, and it's brought in a lot of uh, mm, key findings uh, in this report like they have found that the there has been a um, drastic increase in uh, the population of peacocks and you should understand why peacocks have suddenly increased is it because of the conversation methods or is it because of the penalties imposed in uh, uh, <coughs> its uh, poaching etc or whatever reason and then uh, this report has also found uh, that the sudden decline in raptors why there has been a sudden decline in raptors is it because of the change of habitat or is it because of any other reason it could be pollution or lack of conservation methods or whatever so this report throws in a lot of very interesting findings and you should be very thorough in this and then the national water policy as you all know the government has been uh, putting in a lot of focus as far as the water sector is concerned the earlier uh, departments of um, drinking water and um, water resources have now been clubbed together and a new ministry has been created called the ministry of jal shakti and there are a lot of initiatives being taken in the water sector but do not forget the earlier national water policy and now what are the variation initiatives particularly the interlinking of rivers and various actions being taken to conserve water what is the role of the national water machine what how is it being revamped and how is all the water related to the sustainable development goals and all this anything related to uh, uh, water are going to be very important Similarly, the National Mineral Policy 2019 has brought in a, a lot of fresh insights on looking into how the transportation of minerals is being addressed, particularly at the coastal regions and also uh, the mineral uh, places, uh, the mineral complementarity and also the mineral buffer zones and mineral enrichment zones and all that. So go through this uh, nation and mineral policy as well very thoroughly and then the national biodiversity authority why and how it has been set up what are its basic objectives and all that just go through it and then the uh, waste management rules a couple of questions have come in the previous years what are the provisions of uh, these waste management rules so please just go through try to uh, uh, divide it like this sources of solid waste effects of poor solid waste and methods of solid waste ma management and all that and be very clear on this this has been in, in the talk and in the government circles uh, a lot on how to manage this uh, solid waste and then now coming to the other section of what is environment is the climate change go through all the conferences held during the last one one and a half years in the climate change and then note down what are the outcomes what are the important findings which the discussions during these conferences has come and also there's been a climate uh, index where does india stand and how far have we achieved etc 
so this is the climate change uh, performance uh, index uh, which has come up uh, recently india stood uh, ninth um, um, and that is quite a good position and the us stood last and but the first three uh, slots first second third could not remain vacant because the criteria could not be met by any of the countries so go through uh, this index as well and or any other uh, indices related to climate or environment any report or any um, uh, kind of a convention or anything related to that just please note down and try to systematically cover everything as far as uh, environment and biodiversity is concerned and then the climate action summit held in 2019 in new york us uh, where in um, a lot of urgent uh, issues related to climate change uh, were uh, discussed so try to see what are the highlights of this particular conference and what is the outcome of this and then similarly this emissions trading unf uh, c has brought in this concept of uh, trading uh, these emissions emissions of various gases and also the carbon which is called as a carbon trading so please go through what this uh, um, uh, trading is all about it's uh, very simply uh, it's quite simple it's basically uh, depending on how much of emissions you have reduced you are given an incentive you are uh, given a kind of a um, uh, card or uh, an incentive uh, label wherein you can trade it uh. and then uh, kadegna protocol is about the uh, living modified uh, organisms mm, basically after this uh, protocol um, it has now uh, been, been given a protection to all those uh, <clears throat> biotechnologically improved uh, varieties of uh, biological species their uh, transportation through uh, various countries uh, there is some kind of now uh, uh, restriction to ensure their uh, uh, security after this protocol there is also another protocol called the uh, nagoya protocol uh, here it is about uh, preserving and uh, distributing the uh, biotech technologically engineered uh, products or those varieties which have been improved due to biotechnology uh, uh, techniques to give it a kind of an equitable distribution to all the countries so this is how the uh, both the protocols uh, differ so try to remember what these protocols are because they have been in news and india is also a part of uh, these protocols then carbon trading as i've already said uh, it's just like any other emissions trading instead of trading um, the, uh, like the other gases here it's only trading of carbon and then biocarbon fund initiative this is uh, related to an in initiative taken by the world bank to uh, preserve a sustainable forest landscape all over the world is a very important uh, uh, initiative and then green bonds uh, this is uh, and again another initiative taken by the world bank uh, it raises funds for fixed uh, investors uh, to support uh, the world bank projects um, if they are um, uh, climate change um, uh, uh, complacent or they fall in the category of uh, uh, ensuring uh, the climate change perspective then they are given this uh, green bonds then the green climate fund it was set up by the unsf triple uh, c it's one of the largest and the most uh, dedicated fund for uh, just not helping the uh, countries but particularly with reference to the developing countries so it basically gives a lot of uh, financial support to developing countries to address their issues related to climate change and then global uh, dimming global dimming is opposite of global warming so instead of um, carbon uh, um, uh, increasing here the carbon uh, gets uh, reduced because uh, there are some particles which instead of uh, letting the uh, sun's rays uh, come down to earth they actually uh, reflect back these are the um, byproducts of fossil fuels they are very tiny microscopic particles which don't um, allow the 
sunlight to pass instead they reflect it and they cause this uh, what is called as the global dimming and then the bharat stage missions this is the indian version of the emission standards uh, that have been made and they have been uh, based on the framework released by the european regulations and then you all know about the carbon and uh, water uh, footprint the himalayan glacier as i've already uh, told you this uh, eco sensitive zone the kasturi rangan uh, report about the eco sensitive zone how these uh, entire countries uh, biodiversity zones have been divided and what india is you know, the initiatives that india is taking particularly with reference to western ghats and the himalayan region are very important please try to go through recently ngt has also um, issued an order asking the ministry of environment and forest to Uh, uh, release this uh, uh, eco sensitive zones so please go through that uh, notification and also the order and why they are so important and then the ga tags uh, you are all aware every year that these ga tags are given to various product very various states here is the uh, list of four new products from three new states and just try to remember that though the west bengal's proposal of putting uh, asking for a geo tag for the basmati rice was rejected and then the uh, global forest goals this is another important uh, topic coming up and has been in the um, discussion uh, circuit uh, all over the world because uh, they have uh, now uh, envisioned a, a very long term goal of 2030 what should be the way we conserve the forest in they have come up with the united nations strategic plan for forest so this strategic plan what are the main goals please try to remember and see it and try to um, connect it with the sustainable goals and how far and what is india's role in this framework where does india stand and what are india's goals as well so that's all uh, for this um, uh, video uh, i'll come up again with a few more topics related to environment and biodiversity in my next video probably um, before the third week of september so that you are all hands on as far as this gem domain is concerned geography uh, environment and all map related uh, questions and i'm sure with this um, if you are thorough in all this topic you should be able to very easily crack the prelims and start preparation for the mains all the best stay safe for more videos subscribe to bn by ias and press the bell icon to never miss an update